All right, so I'm actually going to work on the GTI. I know you guys don't really like these videos, but I do. Because I used to have GTIs and GLI Jettas. I was just removing that thing, the uh, car cover. And I can't believe it's been under there like maybe eight months. And it's squeaky clean. A little dust, but I mean, look at this. This is beautiful. This is the damage right here. This is the only thing they got damaged paint-wise right here. You can barely see it. So we're just going to run with it. We don't mind. Yeah, I'm going to try to start it. I have to hook up the battery. Um, hopefully it'll start. Let's go ahead and uh, open this sucker up. Interior is kind of dirty. Well, could have been worse, right? It's not that bad. I can't get in through the other side because the Suburban's in the way. So, I have to reach down here to open the battery. Uh, not the battery. The hood. Because the boys in the hood are always hard, right? Alright, 16 valve engine. This one has been, it's the engine was turboed and I blew up the, the uh, mega squirt uh, control system and I was done with it. I, was just, I, I don't want to screw around with mega squirt anymore. It's because it's, it's, it's very flaky. It's not very reliable. Let's see. See if I can get one more in there. It's kind of tight. All right, should be good enough. All right, let's see if it starts. Let's go inside. Step on that and break it. Hello. Luckily, I'm still skinny, so I can get into really tight spaces. I might be, you know, almost six feet tall, but. Because I'm kind of skinny. I'm all good. This is a cis injection system. Continuous injection system. That's what it stands for. Um, this one is half electronic. It's the uh, cis uh, E. Which stands for electronic. These I've worked on since I was, you know, young. I was in my mid-20s. You know, you know, I've worked on these a lot. So these are very familiar to me. So uh, this is not like something from another planet. Uh, mechanics right now that work on these kind of cars are probably like very few to none. You know, good luck finding a mechanic that knows how to work on these uh, assist injection systems. Um, I already know how to work on them because I've, I've rebuilt the fuel distributor. So I've done a lot of, you know, calibration with the uh, fuel injectors, you know, uh, doing the testing and all that stuff so i have some videos on the on here if you're if you have a cis injection and you're having a lot of trouble which i doubt pretty much you probably all have bugs or air-cooled engines but if you do i have a lot of videos a couple of videos on how to do the fuel metering test so it's down way down there way down there but it's there anyways uh on these you have to prime the fuel and priming the fuel is just nothing more than just um, turning the key on and off to get the air out of the air, the uh, fuel injections, uh, injectors, fuel lines, you know. So you can hear it go, and then it slows down. Okay, she's fully uh, primed. Now, let's see if she starts. Yay, yay. <laughs> Oh my god, it almost started. <laughs> I'm going to prime it a little bit more. Wow. Smooth as a baby's bottom. Perfect. I didn't think it was going to start this easy, but it did. So, I'm good. Okay. So, let's just... uh. Let's get out there. And uh, I gotta move the Volkswagens, the blue one and the green one, I gotta move them out. 
so that I can uh, put this car inside so we can work on it. We're gonna do the uh, drive shaft, the tow linkage broke, we welded it, and so it's been Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse. <laughs> And what else we have to do? We have to replace a bushing on the con lower control arm. And that should be it. This thing should be, uh, we can run it like we stole it again. All right. We got them out. They're over there. So let's get this thing in there. The idle is doing funky stuff. Ah, I can fix that later. It's an old car. So. We'll probably be about there. Half the car inside. That way we have a lot of room to move around. You know what I mean? That, we're gonna take off the big nut for the dry shaft. Because we're gonna replace it, we have a new dry shaft right there. We're gonna do that. We're gonna replace the the what you call it, the wishbone suspension thing, the for the wishbone on the bottom because it broke, and then we're gonna replace the, the ball joint thing. Also, there you go, and uh, that's what we're doing today. This thing is a blast to drive. I mean, these things are fast. Even even though it's no longer turbo, this thing is fast, okay? So I remember these. Oh, my God, I used to race these. And they did pretty good. This is why the insurance on these is really expensive because these things are fast, even though they're old technology, really. I mean, look at that. That's a cis injection distributor block, okay? That right there, it's called a DPR. It's a block. It's a block right here. Let me see if I can get sideways. Can't really see it. Okay, this is the DPR. This increases and decreases the pressure in here by via the computer that's running off the oxygen sensor. So if your oxygen sensor is screwed up, this car will never, ever, 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 ever run right. Ever. Oxygen sensor. DPR also. If it's messed up, this car will never run right. Um, I went ahead and rebuilt the distributor. Because there, there are kits out there, so I, so I was able to rebuild, rebuild the original because it needed it. it. It wasn't good, so I was able to do that. Um, replace all my injectors and everything, and I was able to calibrate everything. And this thing is a beast. A beast! So, I know you guys don't like these, like I said. Uh, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay. You, you can't like everything. I like, and I love these. GLIs, I used to have a 16 valve GLI. Oh my god. Anyways, old memories. So I'm gonna get to it and uh, we'll start working on this right now. So everything's really loose. I mean, look at this. See, down there. See, because that, that's the bushing that broke right there. So, and not only that, this is why we're replacing the uh, that bar. Okay, because it broke from there and we just Mickey Mouse it back together so we can drive it, you know, around here in the property. But uh, we're gonna take this off. We already did, actually. See? So, here we go. So, we've got our branch bank and new dry shaft. Grease, everything. Oh, it's got a new nut. All right. That's good. So, we're gonna go ahead and remove the shaft after we remove everything. So, everything's out of the way and we can just really simply install it. There you go. She busted loose. Okay, so he got this out already from there. So um, we're gonna go ahead and remove this bolt right there and a couple another bolts down there so we can take the wishbone out. It's the one he's taking off right there from the suspension. Then we'll get to this one. We're gonna try to, using the press, we're gonna press this out. Okay. Yeah, that's all messed up. So that's all. That's all we're gonna do, and then we're gonna put it all back together. Okay, so we took it out. Um, I could, actually, I could, we couldn't do it with the press, so we just used the 
a jigsaw and as you can tell we just cut it a little bit just to relieve the stress and then with the screwdriver we just punched it out boom 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 and then until it fell out from this hole so now we're gonna press this one on here but this time we are gonna use the press okay let's see if it goes in it's going in So halfway through our shenanigans, the whole thing just didn't want to go in anymore. <clears throat> Using it the other way, the other adapters and stuff. So, <laughs> so now I'm having to do this, like turn it over, compress it, and as soon as it stops, stop right there. Go to the other side. And do this. Yeah, I bent it right there. Whoops! I'm sure it's gonna be fine. Nobody's gonna care for that. Okay. And so on and so forth until we get it all down. Okay, so last time I did that. Okay. I think she looks beautiful. She's in there. All right. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, I bent it from there. It's just a little bit. It, I don't think it has any, any structural deficiencies. Since that's the empty part, there's no rubber there. Uh, it's actually very difficult to get these, these little tie thingies. Uh, uh, call it hose clamps. <laughs> but the one that goes over there, there's no room, so I had to use my little micro screwdriver. That one right there. Yeah, micro. <laughs> it's the only way I was able to do it. There's just no way. There's no room in there. So I was able to. It took me forever. I'm not gonna put the bone, the wishbone back on. I'm actually gonna remove the the dry shaft, and this is the reason we're removing it. This actually, this is not a bad dry shaft, other than it just needs to be cleaned and. Uh, Regreased and then rebooted and this is the good dry shaft Okay, so dry shaft is out uh, Yeah, yeah, that's hey, believe it. It's actually burning now <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how you know I haven't done nothing in forever uh, Okay, so we've got Apparently we've got new bolts, so we're gonna use the new bolts um, oh, Much better we're gonna use the new bolts I've got a new camera, so it's kind of hard to get used to. And regrease. We're going to pack that with grease. That's what we're going to do. The messy job. Nobody wants to do. You're doing it, right? Yeah, I'll do it. All right, he's doing it. Woo, safe. It's in. All right. It's in. Okay. Okay, everything's just loose. So now we're gonna put the the, the wishbone on. The wishbone, the lower control arm. <laughs> That's, and then we'll be uh, able to tighten everything up. So our dilemma is these two bolts, they're almost identical, but one of them is a little longer. We don't know which one goes there. And which one goes down there? Okay, so we need to measure. Let's just measure that real quick, just so we know where it goes. Z bolt. That one's on. The other one back there is also on. So we're just gonna tighten them. Those are we we are gonna tighten, and we're also gonna install the the sway bar right there, that end link to the bush bone, and uh, we're gonna add that end to the axle to the uh, get that thing. We've got everything. She's done. New shaft. Shaft is torqued. So everything's perfect. Now this thing is like solid. Remember, it used to go. <coughs> Not anymore. She's perfect. I got my little. <laughs> I stole it from the living room. 
My wife is gonna kill me if she finds me. Anyways, I gotta clean up all my mess. Uh, she's done. I'm gonna uh, torque those and then drop it down, and she's done. I st I still have to work on the catalytic converter and the downpipe and replace those springy thingies, those things that I have over there, over there. And yeah, that's my hand. I mean, and I kind of cleaned it up. <laughs> yeah, this is this is why maybe we should have pressure washed it, huh? But then we're gonna take off the rust inhibitor, all that grease. <laughs> Anyways, I gotta put all this crap back and just it's, this is just a mess. It's gonna take a while. Here I am somewhere in LA. Not gonna say where, but there's my hunk of junk. I was just fueling it. Door is ajar. So this is more or less what I do all day. Uh, luckily, it's all dropping a hook. Uh, uh, my company doesn't really deal, for the most part, they only deal with the dropping hook. They don't do like loading and unloading and all that stuff because uh, there's a lot of potential of the driver getting hurt and not being able to do the delivery. So they kind of avoid those like the plague. And that right there, my friend, is a hardcore VW mechanic right there. He builds nothing but Baja bugs. <laughs> He's a hardcore VW. Uh, now he's a he's a mechanic here at the shop. So people to meet, people to help, and back to the regular program. Okay, it's a different day. Yeah, I ran out of uh, daylight the other day, and uh, <clears throat> there you go. I'm uncovering it again, and. She's, uh, she still looks clean. She's got a lot of water spots, so uh, that's not going to show. Uh, we're going to actually fix the idling problem, the surging problem. Um, it's actually, it's, I suspect it's, it's either going to be the idle control valve, the air control valve that's right next to the distributor, right in the center of the engine bay. Or it's going to be a broken wire or loose connection where the uh, idle switch is at the throttle. Right at the throttle. Idle switch right there. Or a loose screw that grounds all the grounds to the block. That will also cause it. I'm going to check all that stuff real quick. and um, it, sh it should take me like 30 seconds to diagnose this thing. All right. So. I'm gonna go ahead and start working on this sucker real quick so we can get this thing. I, I, I wanna test it. I wanna see if the alignment, because I just eyeballed it. Just eyeballed the alignment. And it looks like it's pretty straight right there. See how it kinda, okay. Then we look at this one. Oh, it's kinda hard to see. This one also looks almost identical. Okay, so it looks pretty straight to me. Let's see what happens when we get it on the road. Um, let's go ahead and start it and well actually I'm not gonna start it I'm gonna check all the wiring first see if I can find the problem okay like I said place to look for oscillation on a sys e sys e is because of this block uh, this is the DPR digital pressure regulator that's what it stands for DPR the fuel pressure gets adjusted right here okay so where you look for over here when it's oscillating like on your idle is generally this switch right here this plug right here your wires check that all your wires are connected sometimes they get fried back here like that and you have to go and replace one by one which i had to do on this car because the turbo was right there and it was cooking all the wires uh, okay so fix that so i know it's not that because i know i did good job <laughs> Yeah, whatever. So, the next place that it would cause an oscillation is actually a vacuum leak, okay? I know this car doesn't have a vacuum leak because I replaced all the hoses and everything. So, it doesn't have a vacuum leak. I know that for a fact. Okay, the other place that it will cause an oscillation is this 
bunch of wires right here that get bolted through the head. Okay, right here with this uh, 10 millimeter. Okay, see that? See that? That'll cause it. There you go. This is the cause of the oscillation right there. <sighs> when I close the hood, the shock actually probably sent a shock to this and it and it caused the engine to do that. Okay, that'll cause it, okay? So this is loose, I'm gonna fix that. And the other place is right here. If, you're, if your wires are broken inside the connector, because they get broken in here, they, they break, they break off. So you have to just like flip over the rubber and you can see all your connections. And you pretty much know where they go because um, you, you should, you'll figure it out. Can't be that hard. Um, and that's pretty much it. Those are the three, say one, two, three locations and your vacuum leaks uh, that will call, give you the oscillation. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten that and that should fix that real quick. See, that took like 30 seconds. I didn't even know that was loose. Okay, let's see if it starts. Um, I, I left the battery connected, so I don't know if that's going to drop the voltage. Uh, you know, well, let's see what happens. I'm just purging the thing what it does when i do this it actually one of the injectors opens up and it sprays fuel kind of like you know like when you pump your carburetor kind of like that it just sprays fuel for a couple of seconds that's why you do that so that if you've had your cart stored for many months it'll it'll the the fuel will vaporize and those lines will be empty full of air you know so you want to get that air out okay let's see if it starts come on baby Oh, just barely, barely. All right, let's get that hood down and uh, go for a ride. Okay, the clutch is really high. It grabs really high. I'm not used to that. See how straight the steering wheel. <laughs> I don't know the alignment. Okay, that's it right there. Just the hair off. Pretty close for eyeballing it. I think. Oh yeah. It's kind of like a rough ride because it's got like uh, racing uh, springs or lowering springs with racing. Uh, struts so it's kind of bumpy then it has uh what do you call it uh those extra thick uh sway bars front and rear so no just the back sorry just the backs let's see what kind of power this thing lays down used to the clutch. Better not break down. It also has a, a racing clutch, so it grabs a little hard. I want him to get away, the guy in front of me. Turbo, and he easily beat him. 
yeah. This thing is rated, the, the, the horsepower, like I said, it was 170. That's more or less what they figured when they when they dynoed it. Um, you know how the, you know, it's 170. Well, actually, it dynoed a little bit less than that, but that was at the wheels. So the guy said it was more or less about 170 at the flywheel. And I believe it because, damn, this thing is lightning fast. This will definitely blow a turbo to kingdom come. You know, four cylinder, a similar car with, you know, running maybe eight pounds of boost, 10 pounds of boost, this thing will eat it up. Easy. So I got the idiot book out because I need to know the measurements for my uh, toe and my caster and all that good stuff. Okay, so caster, we're not going to worry about it because it's not adjustable. Non-adjustable. Not to worry about it. There we go, see? Uh, camber, okay. So I was checking my camber. I have the tool to do that. Turns out the side that, that snapped the the, uh, the tie rod and... Um, and broke the suspension on uh, uh, the, the uh, lower control arm that we repaired. Okay, it goes at 30. 30 degrees. 30, well, actually, it's 35 for the GTIs, but this is a 16 valve, so it goes at negative 40, meaning the, the upper part is towards the inside, towards the motor, the upper part of the tire. That's what it means on both sides, so the other side would be pointing that way. Uh, uh, so... As far as the toe, it's basically positive to zero to, to positive 10, meaning that they're slightly doing this. But one wheel, well, this is the other one, almost zero. So so that's not that hard to set. And I already checked on the, on a website and checked out what the how far the tires are versus the rear. And it turns out that they're almost identical. They're like literally point, uh, point uh, zero three. Uh, difference so it's it's like negligible uh, I don't really need to that's not gonna affect anything so I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the caster just this guy to this value okay okie doke okay so this is the tool that I use always when I'm doing my caster my I'm sorry my camber alignments and and casters so it just just put on the side of the rim like on the bottom right there on the side of the rim same thing up in here like so and then I turn my little bubbly thingy and then we'll put it all back together that's that simple that's right in the center of the bubble that line okay so I already knew how many degrees I needed to um, make the top of the rotor go that way so i just lifted it up you know loosen my adjusting bolts this one and that one and then i just pushed it in and tightened it and then checked it because i had already done the degrees this is an nft tool i don't know if you can find these anymore i bought those uh like 25 30 years ago at the i think uh yeah that magazine jc whitney whitley whitney i don't remember what it, what the name was or whitley whatever um i got that tool from there so that's why i never do my my <laughs> that's why i never ever take these to the alignment shop because i uh, i can do it myself <sighs> that was a mistake taking the suburban to the so-called laser alignment Ooh. And I left it all fucked up. Shouldn't have said that. I left it all screwed up. Yes, I did complain. And um, I didn't get my money back. So it kind of sucked. <laughs> so I had to fix it myself. I'm going to put this back together. It should be now a line identical to the other side. I checked the other side. The other side is perfect. It's within the specs. And this one is also in the, within specs now. So I'm actually rotating the tires, putting the front ones in the back and as soon as i did that discovered more damage i didn't see that before see i can see the cords right there and i'm i'm like doing burnouts <laughs> first second and third 
<laughs> yeah, you can see how it slid when it was slipping on the freeway. You see the tire scuff marks. So we're going to get new tires for the back now because the new ones are in the front. So uh, I'm about to finish the alignment now. Let me put this back on and we'll finish it. So now we have our camber. Both of them are the same. Um, I didn't adjust the toe because the toe looks like it's dead on. Zero. At zero. So let's find out how crooked we are. I think it's perfectly centered. Yeah, it appears to be right in the center now. stickers in the front tires so I think I'm gonna burn them off right now centered so I'm not gonna do any more adjustments this thing is perfectly aligned does not pull to the right or to the left it goes perfectly straight I like it da, 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 da. feels as fast as my, my son's uh, turbo TTI, his MK7. Almost, I said almost. And with that, that pretty much puts an end to this video. Um, I absolutely love this car. Um, I would, if, I, if it were mine, I would completely detail it inside and out. All the uh, trims would be detailed. The whole, uh, everything would be detailed. Yes, because I'm, this deserves... A lot more detail. <laughs> Detailing. <laughs> oh god. I used to be very uh I couldn't I couldn't stand a, sp a water spot in my in my glass or anything like that. But as I got older I just like eh. But this one deserves that kind of cleaning. Inside in out. Um everything's done. It runs great. We'll just uh make sure that we get new tires for the back and that'll be it so till next one adios muchachos adios muchachas